Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out a wireless solution that's in direct competition to that of the Rode Wireless GO 2. I'm using a Rode Wireless GO 2 right now, so it'll be interesting to see how well the Cinco G2A2 holds up. Now, when it comes down to it, this is basically the same type of pack, except it's a little bit less expensive. I'll leave prices and all that kind of stuff in the description as they change over time, so you can check the links down there. But this is essentially two transmitters to one receiver, and I'm gonna show you what we get in the box, and then we're gonna hook it up. Now, before we get going, I just want to let you know that Cinco have sent this out for the review. They're not paying me in addition to letting me hold onto this pack. So all thoughts about this will be my very own. At the end of the video, and I'll timestamp it, I'll give you my thoughts about this pack and how it holds up against the competition. So let's see what we get in the box. Let's do a quick unboxing and then we'll hook this up and compare it to the audio that you've been listening to with the Rode Wireless Go 2. So inside of the box here, we can open this up. We get this rocking little carry case here. We also get some instructions. I'll talk about the specs in just a moment. And if you want to skip ahead again, I'll leave timestamps in the description below. So let's open this up. All right, here we go. This is really cool. One of the biggest criticisms I have of a lot of dual transmitted or one receiver packs is that you need three individual charging cables to charge everything. This just requires this one USB A type connector, and then it goes to all three of the units to charge. So this has provided awesome stuff. Additionally, we get two lavalier microphones and these just connect straight into the transmitters and I'll show you that in just a moment. And when it comes to each of the transmitters, they have their onboard microphone built directly into the unit, which is awesome. It means you don't have to use a lavalier microphone to get these packs to work. And I really like that, but it does come with an optional port on this side here. We get a TRS to TRS connector for using it with a mobile phone. And we also get a regular TRS connector, which I'll be using directly into the GH5 Mark II. Including the accessories, we get a couple of these dead cats, which kind of clip on and also Velcro onto each of the transmitters. These help drastically cut down wind noise. I'm using one right now. It's really windy out here. Included, we get a couple of cable management ties and clips for the lavalier microphones. This tool helps hardware reset the units thanks to a hidden button on the side of the units. And if you choose to use the lavalier microphone, you also get a couple of pop filters. Now, when it comes to my initial impressions of build quality of the transmitter and the receiver, these are easily on par with the Rode Wireless Go just in terms of how they feel in the hand. I'm yet to test the audio quality out, but just in terms of build quality, these feel really good. They're right up there as well with the Blink 500 Pro just in terms of their build quality. Again, they feel great. The clip feels nice and robust on the back and it doesn't feel like you're gonna have any issues with breakage or anything like that. If we take a look at the transmitter, as you can see, we have the built-in microphone on the top. This is where we can also connect that dead cat accessory that I'll be using in the video. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's do that. <laughs> On this side of the transmitter, we have our mute button and on off button. So to hold it down, turns it on and off. We can also charge the unit via this USB-C port over here. We also get our lavalier microphone connector port here. On this side of the unit, we have our high pass filter, which rolls out a little bit of low end. This is especially useful if you've got a lot of traffic noise or a lot of wind noise and you want to knock that low end sort of boom down, you can push this button in. We also get a pairing button, that is if it doesn't pair automatically. When it comes to the receiver, this is just as well built as the transmitter. We get an output audio jack, which goes to your camera or smartphone. We also get real-time headphone monitoring over here. So this is great. We get the ability to turn up and down the output volume to our source. So whether that's going into a camera or a smartphone, for example, you can turn these up and down using these controls on this side. On this side of the unit, we get our mono to stereo switch and power button. This is great being able to switch from between stereo and mono. This is a stereo pack, so that means you can have two transmitters going into individually the left and right channel of the audio, or you can have it do a mix down to mono. So depending on your situation, this is a really great option. And then we get our charge port over here. Up until this point in the video, you've still been listening to my Rode Wireless Go 2. I've got the transmitter just in my jacket here. So what I'm gonna do now is switch it over to the Cinco. I'm gonna see if there's a huge difference in terms of audio quality. And now listening to the audio from the Cinco G2 A2 wireless transmission system, can you hear a huge difference between this and the Rode Wireless Go 2 you were listening to before? To set this up, it was nice and simple. I turned them both on, they synced perfectly. The dead cat actually stays attached really well to the transmitter and I've got it in exactly the same spot I had the prior unit on. So hopefully you can hear a very comparable test between this and the previous Rode Wireless Go. 
Now what I'm going to do is do a distance test coming up where I like to test just how well it works when I'm facing and not facing the camera. This is one of the Achilles heels of a lot of these packs. So let's head over there before it starts to rain. Up next, we're doing a distance test now. Cinco rate this pack up to 150 meters line of sight. But what I'm gonna do is start walking backwards and every now and then I'm just gonna turn around and see how it handles when I'm not line of sight with the actual receiver. So right now, the line of sight is true between the transmitter and the receiver. I'm gonna turn around right now and talk and if it cuts out or does anything weird, I'll leave annotations on screen. I'm hoping due to this 150 meter line of sight that it still works here, but I've had some packs cut out really early when you're not facing line of sight. So I'm gonna keep walking backwards here and keep talking. Again, if anything cuts out, I'll let you know. Now, I'm walking up a pretty steep incline here, so if I start huffing and puffing, you'll know why I'm not as unfit as I look. <laughs> or maybe I am, who knows? But anyway, I'm gonna go back to about 25 meters here, maybe 30 meters and turn around and talk. And if it cuts out or does anything weird, I'll leave some annotations on the screen. And I'm just gonna keep walking backwards this way. I'm gonna see how it handles this as I walk away from the camera, still line of sight. Again, I'm gonna turn around and keep talking. And if it cuts out, I'll leave some annotations on screen. And how did it go? How did it handle that? If it still handled that, okay, this might be one of the best packs out there. I've never had any pack work at that distance when I'm not facing line of sight. So we'll see how this goes. And for the final test, I'm probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 meters away. The camera looks pretty small in the distance. I'm just gonna walk back to the camera briefly, or as quickly I should say, and also just talk on the way back down. I've had some packs cut out when I'm actually on the move, which is a bit weird. So this will be a bit of a real world test. A lot of people may be shooting a show outdoors, will be walking towards the camera from time to time. We might be doing you know, a two person interview, for example, on the move, and this will give you a representation of just how well this works in a kind of walk and talk situation. So if this worked or if it had any issues, I'll leave them on screen and I'll comment about all of this at the end of this video. It's about to rain again. Arr! As I mentioned before, this is a true stereo pack and I'm gonna show you just how that works in stereo mode. So if I talk into this transmitter right now, it's coming out of your right side. If I talk into this transmitter, it's coming out of your left side. And of course, if I talk into both of them, it's gonna sound kind of funny until I click the stereo to mono switch, which makes them both mono. So if you're doing any type of live streaming and you've only got one camera and you don't wanna do any special audio mixing, run it in mono. And that means it doesn't matter which one I talk into now, sound is gonna come out evenly between both. Now in terms of usability so far so good with one small exception that I need to mention in this video. The LCD screens on these units are really tough to see outdoors when the sun comes out. When it was overcast and raining, I had no problems. But as soon as the sun came out, I couldn't see anything and it made it worse with polarized sunglasses. So if you kind of have to see the screens, you're gonna to have to cover them up a little bit with your hand to give it some shade so you can see what's going on. So if you like me and you like to wear sunglasses outdoors because of the glare, or if you wear polarized sunglasses and you're shooting on bright sunny days, seeing the screens might be a little bit tricky, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. On this test, you're listening to the provided lavalier microphone with this little windsock. Now, there's no dead cat in the box that works with the lavalier mic, right? So if you want one of them, you're gonna have to buy one of those separately. But again, that's not a deal breaker. I love the flexibility of having a lavalier microphone set up over that of having something clipped onto my shirt, especially if you're wearing a t-shirt, the clips can sometimes, or the transmitters, can sometimes sort of drag your t-shirt down a little bit. So having a lavalier microphone like this will appeal to a lot of people. You can also conceal them under your t-shirt if you know what you're doing as well. But just for the sake of this test, I've got it sort of tucked in my jacket because it is quite windy here right now. And I guess you'll also hear whether or not this works with any sort of wind because it is extremely windy out here. So hopefully that location works. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the specifications in a practical sense because I don't feel like reading from the spec sheet is of any use to anybody. So. When it comes to the transmitters, we get a full range microphone. This is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is the entirety of the human hearing spectrum, which is fantastic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's also a high pass filter, which cuts the low end. And being that it's extremely windy here, I'm gonna click that in right now. I'm gonna see if there's a difference in the audio. Can you hear a difference? There's cars going by. It's extremely windy. Hopefully the dead cat is doing the job and hopefully the high so the high pass filter is actually working. So high pass means allowing all the high end to pass. You can look at it like that way. 
and it also cuts out a little bit of the low. So this should help tidy up the sound if there were any issues with low end traffic rumble. Another huge benefit to this pack is that both of the transmitters and the receiver only weigh 39 grams, which means they're awesome for travel. I can't believe how light they are while still feeling really great in the hand. Additionally, each of these packs are loaded with a 500 milliamp hour battery and it's a rechargeable lithium ion battery as well. So you'll get many years of use out of each of these packs. After reviewing all the footage in editing and also listening to the audio quality, I'm gonna give you my final thoughts about this pack. So some of the stuff I love about this, the distance test, this passed with flying colors. I haven't tested another pack that works this well at distance. So if you're looking for something with really reliable outdoor transmission that doesn't break when you turn away from the camera, this would be the one to go for. Now, I've tested so many packs that work great up to about 20 meters, but any further than that, and that's where stuff starts to go wrong. Some go wrong before that. So the Cinco gets that right. I would have no hesitations recommending this for someone who does a lot of outdoor work at a distance away from the camera. Let's talk about audio quality because this is what matters the most. Do these sound great? Yes. Do they have more bass than the Rode Wireless Go? Yes, at the expense of one thing. These have a little bit more hiss in the signal. Now, I haven't been able to fine tune that with any of my cameras and I've tested it now with three. This is my Panasonic GH5S that has awesome preamps. We tested it in the field with something with better preamps, the Panasonic GH5 II. And I also have a Panasonic S5. Now Panasonic cameras have great preamps and I've just noticed that these are a little bit more on the noisy side, not the preamps, but the actual packs than the Rode Wireless Go. And it should be pretty evident in the video footage itself. So go back and listen with headphones and you'll know exactly what I mean. But you do get an enhanced low end, which really does sound kind of nice. And if you've got some background music on or if there's traffic noise and all that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to notice it that much. It's definitely not a deal breaker considering the price and performance of these units. The only other small critique I have is that the LED screens on the front of the units are a little bit hard to see outdoors. They're easier to see indoors than outdoors, so just keep that in mind. Lastly, the setup process was as easy as it gets and switching between mono and stereo is one click on the receiver. I love that and being also able to easily change each channel A or B on the receiver's volume is nice and simple as well and that'll allow you to get the right mix between two people. Overall, this pack is really good. I'm gonna say just in terms of functionality and what it can offer, it's right up there with the Ceremonic Blink 500 Pro, but it's not quite a Rode Wireless Go 2 because they also have internal recording on the actual transmitters. Now, not everyone's going to need that. And I would almost say if you're gonna be buying this pack, you probably won't need it given these work so well outdoors. So overall, this is a really great pack. Let me know your thoughts about the audio quality. And if you've already got one of these, let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.